morning? I'm um, just gonna dive right in. Um, talking about WP, what it is, where it came from. Um, it could be considered as a WebKit GDK's younger brother, uh, the GDK port of WebKit. Uh, I think that one started in 2007, maybe even before, before that. Uh, the point of WP is that um, it backtracks a bit and it sheds the GDK dependency. Uh, in addition to that dependency, also uh, some um, dependencies that are specific to the GNOME platform. Uh, as such, uh, we've decided for WPE to not be bound to any toolkit or platform. Uh, one possible way of imagining what it is, is kind of uh, having it as a uh, run time for this vanilla web. Uh, just plain web, really nothing else, uh, not tied to any platform or toolkit. Um, but it's also meant to be an adjustable and a very low level um, web content embedding solution. Uh, the work on this port started in 2014. Um, the initial prototype or idea was presented at the, oh, at the 2014 Hackfest. Uh, we did another update two years ago, and um, yeah, 2018, I guess the next one is in 2020. Um, the major milestone here was the upstreaming to the, uh, to the WebKit community and happened, the announcement was done in April 2017, I think it took a few more months to get there. Um, a bit about the adaptability of the thing. Um, so internally, the WebKit code or the WPE specific bits are working against uh, interface definitions. The main ones here being uh, so-called render targets, which are intended for composition, which are used for composition of the web content. And uh, on the other side, there are view backends, uh, which um, uh, handle both device input as well as enabling the user to manage the visual output, uh, again, at a very low level. I'll provide an example later. Um, then it's up to the deployers uh, or packagers or whatever you want to call them. Uh, it's up to them to provide platform-specific interface implementations. Uh, these are held in a separate um, library object, which is loaded at runtime. Uh, what this enables is that we can um, get WP up and running on a variety of hardware platforms on a s small plethora of um, very different graphics drivers. Um, and um, the idea is that this low-level approach is not really imposing many limits to the users and deployers. A bit about the current status of the port. Um, so, yeah, this will kind of be of a um, sideline of this talk that a lot of this is shared with WebKitGDK, um, them being kind of the relatives. Um, we have aligned the uh, releases with uh, the GDK port. Uh, we're doing them off of the same stable branch, uh, so it's kind of a two for one branch management. Um, and um, the first release, I think it was in this spring, 2.20. Uh, 2.22 is uh, the current one. I think we're not yet published. We haven't yet published the, the actual release, but we're in pre-release phases. Uh, we have settled uh, on the G-Object-based API, which until now has been used primarily in the GDK port. Uh, this API is now stabilized. And uh, again, something that we share with WebKitGDK for a uh, majority of the API. Uh, there are specific bits, there are, there are bits specific to WPE and some that we cannot reuse that are only used in WebKit GDK. Uh, about the interface library, it started off as this lib WPE backend uh, name, uh, but we simplify this to just lib WPE. Uh, the API has been stabilized there as well, um, but um, the future iterations and changes in as required in WebKit uh, 
could also require changing the API probably quite significantly. A uh, recent development is the, um, the libxkb common dependency. Uh, this was added as we were working on the web driver implementation. Um, the necessity was simply that we needed something that's can have the, that can offer predictable key mapping functionality. Um, the reference backend library, uh, the, the one that we use for testing and for dock booting, is um, still following the old um, name form, uh, but it's based on the FDO stack. Internally, we use uh, Wayland EGL capabilities. Uh, I had this catchphrase for a few years that I try to not use that often anymore, but it's, it, it, it effectively uh, enables us to do cross-process buffer sharing, uh, which is kind of the idea behind this Wayland extension, but it's not the only way to do this. Uh, the, uh, we actually built API on top of, um, uh, inside this library, separate from WebKit and from uh, libwpe. Uh, and it's API that um, just gives us options on how to use that graphical output. Uh, the highest level thing here are EGL images. Um, these can just be directly embedded into a different into a into a user managed EGL scene, so you can have like nice rendering or effectively compositing of the output results um, in your program. Uh, the other option are are these um, uh, Wayland resource objects, which you can push into the into various EGL APIs as supported by our platform. Um, another option uh, we still have to add, but it's used internally are the uh, Linux DMA uh, buff um, um, planes and information. Basically, this is a file descriptor along with a lot of descriptive information. Um, and again, this can be just pushed directly into the frame buffer or converted into an EGL resource or a Vulkan resource at some point. Um, FDO here being free desktop .org. Um, uh, So basically, we're talking here about Mesa and the general Linux open source graphics stack. Uh, it's uh, very um, useful on desktops uh, running Intel GPUs. We are, we are now also using it on various embedded devices which uh, are supported in Mesa. Uh, about how we uh, use the thing from day to day. <coughs> Mini browser is one option. This is just a simple uh, web view application. Uh, we developed this inside the WebKit tree. Um, it's effectively a Wayland client, so it's kind of limited how it can be used. You either need a Western compositor running under X11, or if you're bleeding edge enough, I mean, it's enabled on some distributions now, but it's, uh, you can run it under your uh, desktop window manager as well. Um, then there's COG, uh, and this is the reference testing browser. Uh, for now, it's, uh, it, it can work with various backends, uh, the, the FDO backend implementation being the one that's most tested. Um, but it, the COG itself can be powered by either the GDK or the WPE ports. Uh, then there was this, DWIS, whatever. Um, basically, we dropped this because uh, not many people appreciated the idea of using Lua. Um, about where we are seeing WP in action, uh, at least what we know of, because there's always someone dropping by with a cool story how to use it. Um, the most wide deployment is probably in setup boxes. We're working on some home appliances and entertainment devices. Um, there's also deployment in in-flight and in-vehicle infotainment systems and the digital signage. Okay, so a bit about um, what we'll be working on in the future. Uh, I'll just start off with a disclaimer here that um, this is more of a list of the things that we're already working on, continue, continuing to work on, and things that we're thinking about. Uh, I don't really make a clear distinction between the two in the list, but 
maybe I should. So, <coughs> um, so yeah, most of this has already been in the works for a long time uh, with really nice improvements. Uh, if we're going to go, for instance, look at the 2016 presentation, you'll see a lot of things repeated here. Uh, it's just uh, this is simply due to um, uh, either uh, just the tasks being so large in scope or just um, the repetitive nature of these tasks. Um, and yeah, this is not specific to WPE, it's specific to the GDK port as well. Um, I'll start off with multimedia. Um, MSC and DME, uh, these are kind of um, moving targets, mostly because of these yearly certification suites being published. Um, but as of late, a lot of uh, the effort here has, is being focused on upstream. Uh, WebRDC has been in the works for a while now. Um, open WebRDC, we've had, to, uh, we've had to kind of desert after it's being deserted. Nice shirt, Phil. <laughs> um, yeah, so the only solution here for now is like libwebrtc, uh, which is kind of used everywhere now. Um, there's uh, Thibault, a colleague of mine, will be giving a more uh, in-depth look to this in, in the talk later today. Uh, about graphics, uh, yeah, this is kind of um, the area where we can benefit, where we should be uh, improving the most in the future. Uh, we are kind of stuck with Cairo for now. Uh, what we've been able to do is move, push that painting Cairo operations into, into different threads. So there's been like real, uh, benefits, we've seen benefits, but the, um, uh, it's not really efficient. In fact, it can waste more, more CPU than it did before. So we want to get the more things offloaded to the GPU. Uh, yeah, um, things here are more, it will be hard, I guess, but the payoff will be good enough, we hope. Uh, we're not the first to do this, of course. Uh, we're going to try and just mimic what Servo has been and Web Render has been most successful at. Um, by the time of the next iteration of this presentation, yeah, maybe we can talk about Vulkan as well. Um, and uh, the GPU process is also something that we could, we would be ideally looking at. Uh, it kind of depends a lot of the, on, the, uh, on the painting being just uh, offloaded to the GPU. Um, with that, uh, I feel confident the GPU process is not too far away. A bit more on this, uh, on this area. Uh, WebGL2 is something that we started, then we had to move away from because of other uh, priorities. Uh, this is now being inside the WebKit community, picked up by Apple. Um, progress there is ongoing. Um, another um, another f area of focus here is WebGPU. It's this new thing where it's kind of trying to translate Vulkan or Metal APIs to the web. Uh, we will be, well, we, it, this, the thing is still in the specification phase. Uh, we don't really have any capacity to participate there. Um, but it will have to be the implementation that we would work on would be Vulkan based. Or maybe like WebGL, it could be just handled by Angle and you, we would utilize that. Um, Options still open there, but it's something we would be taking a look at in the future. Um, on the network and security side, we've taken over the LibSoup maintenance, uh, so we're publishing now releases for that as well. Uh, we've had a few debates already whether it would be just uh, simpler to move over to, to the curl library, uh, but we haven't made a decision there yet. We were able to finish the HSTS implementation and the, um, the other big thing is we're finally wrapping up on initial sandboxing support. This will be done through Flatpak. Though um, it should still be possible that on various platforms 
uh, that already provide some sandboxing capabilities, we could just run inside that. As for standards, yeah, um, we've um, contributed a lot um, um, in the areas of um, EME web package, uh, this one's still ongoing, uh, as well as image bitmap and web driver. There's probably a lot more that I'm forgetting about. Uh, important um, topic we're working on is web predictability. Um, but yeah, the beauty of WebKit is that you can quite easily adopt um, this standard support, especially if it's uh, implemented in a very port agnostic way. Um, for instance, service workers, there have been a few bugs we had to fix, but otherwise it was just enabling a build flag. Um, we've also started a bit playing with web platform tests. Um, just trying to integrate uh, the WebKit builds in, into the, into the uh, web platform tests, uh, testing infrastructure. Uh, basically have just uh, there, um, a, you have to provide the necessary running um, run or glue code to, to get your build to run through by utilizing WebDriver. You can just load the, and run the web platform tests. Um, this is not yet finished, it's just been prototyped, but, but the idea is to have this integrated into the QA process. Maybe at first not at the same priority as we do the, as we have the uh, integrated the, the layout test suite, but ideally we would gradually get there. As for JavaScript core, um, yeah, the areas where we see our WebKit ports used a lot is unfortunately the 32-bit hardware, uh, ARM version 7 and MIPS. Uh, so yeah, we've put a lot of effort into maintaining JIT engines for those, uh, for those hardware platforms. Uh, apart from that, we've already um, um, contributed a lot around big end for class fields. I think if uh, not concrete work, we've prototyped some of it. A um, bit about the weekend projects, um, or these moonshot projects, or fun things we would like to work on, but don't really have the capacity obvious from the name. Uh, one of it is um, uh, just uh, augmented or virtual reality uh, stuff. Uh, there's open VR. Um, oh no, uh, the web standard equivalent is web VR. Uh, there's existing content for this, uh, but otherwise the, uh, the spec is not really abandoned, but the focus has been shifted over to WebXR. OpenXR being the Chronos standard that could be used interoperably on different devices. Uh, Open uh, WebXR is uh, still in the spec phase. Uh, I think there are prototypes available in Chrome, probably Servo. Um, but um, not really. Uh, the work we've done so far in WebKit is uh, web VR uh, focused with the hope that at some point in the future we would be just moving over to, to WebXR. Uh, the other aspect is that uh, follow these XR browsers idea and just start embedding web content into XR scenes. A uh, bit related to that is the next item is the Android support. Um, it's very work in progress, but not that much work is being f uh, put there. Uh, there's a backend implementation that I keep around, don't really update, but it's not really publicly usable. Uh, but even with that backend implementation, uh, there still uh, is required, there's quite a lot of code being required just to glue into the Android process model, which is kind of a not an odd thing, but Android, I guess. 
Um, but yeah, so now it's just a prototype. Um, it's I can whip out a phone and show it to to interest parties, interested parties. Um, but it's yeah, far from being either a usable browser or a usable runtime. Um, that's all I have. If there are any questions, happy to answer them. No. All right, thank you.